How do you connect a wheel to a bicycle? That's the question we're going to be exploring today, and I've got lots of great answers for you, so stay tuned and pay attention. Hi, I am TJ Tollickson, retired professional triathlete and CEO of Diamond Bikes, and we're going to be exploring axles and wheel attachment on bikes. So what I've got here is a kid's BMX bike in front of me, and you can see for most of the history of bicycles, uh, wheels were attached to forks and to rear dropouts with bolts. So this is just bolts. I can't pull this out. There's no way to do it. I can unbolt this and then remove the wheel. And the same thing with the rear wheel. And that served its purpose really well for a long period of time. And then in the 1920s, Campagnolo, the famous Italian components maker, invented the quick release skewer. And what you see, this is a skewer that looks very similar to the very first quick release skewer that Campagnola uh, announced. And since that time, there was a standard for front axles, which was 100 millimeters long. And this quick release skewer uh, uses a hole through the hub that has a nine millimeter shoulder on it. And this five millimeter diameter uh, steel rod runs through it, connects both sides. It uses these springs to help spring load it in place and this cam lever to tighten it, right? So, so while the front standard was always 100 millimeters, the rear was originally 130 millimeters, but as the cassettes got larger, there was a need to bump those out to 135 millimeters. So the last most relevant quick release skewer bicycles were 100 millimeter fronts, 135 millimeter rears. Uh, then what happened, and we used these same skewers for mountain bikes and road bikes, and then so it happened with mountain bikes first, where we started using quick release skewers with disc brakes. And the disc brakes uh, created a challenge for the quick release skewers because the alignment of the wheel needed to be perfectly straight. And so if you accidentally tighten this skewer at a tiny angle, then what would happen is the disc rotor would be off from the calipers and it would be very difficult for you to ride your bike because the rotor would be rubbing against the brake pads. So um, to combat that, mountain bikes use something called a through axle. So what I have here is a 12 millimeter through axle and this is for a front wheel. Uh, but you see this through axle actually goes all the way through the fork and threads into the other side. Now sometimes you're threading directly into the fork. A lot of times you're threading into a nut. Let's get nuts! On the other side of the fork. So this will go on the other side of the fork, thread this together, um, tighten it up. Now the original through axles were just bolts like this, so it's not that dissimilar to bolt-on wheels from the BMX days. So you would use a wrench in the end of this, tighten it into the frame, straight through the fork, straight through uh, the hub of the wheel, and then out the other side and it tightens it. The advantages to this are it, it 100% aligns the wheel to the fork or the frame, right? So it does that. It also provides increased strength and rigidity. Now all of these are aluminum. All the ones that we're using now are aluminum, but because they're 12 millimeters in diameter, uh, they're very strong. You cannot bend this with your hands. Don't get in an argument with me. I don't need to watch videos of you bending these things with your hands or your teeth or some of the differences uh, in these, you see once these were released with mountain bikes, it became difficult because people would complain that you need a tool to do this. So, and boom, goes the let's make a through axle with a handle. Some of the handles are actually removable, so you can pull the handle off and put it back on. DT Swiss uses through axles like that. Um, so you can have a handle on it so you can do it without a tool. Um, for road bikes, it's more common to see ones uh, without a tool because you can get a lot more leverage with a wrench on this than you can with this little handle. Plus, this is more aero and it has a cleaner look to it, right, for both front and rear. Um, so we introduced handles to it, uh, and then we have front and rear ones, and then we progressed to mountain bikes where the current standard for mountain bikes is called boost. What does boost mean? I bet you're gonna tell me. 
Boost means that you have a 15 by 110, so 110 millimeter front axle. So you can see the difference between a 15 and a 12 millimeter axle right here. Um, three millimeters in diameter. Um, so the 15 millimeter through axle uh, is a really nice benefit, but what it does is it allows for uh, a wider axle and a bigger axle so you can have a stronger connection with the front fork and the front hub, right? So for mountain biking, this becomes really important. Boost is not really necessary for road bikes or even gravel bikes for that matter. Um, and then boost spacing in the back of the mountain bike is actually 148 millimeters. So why are we going from 142 to 148? What's that six extra millimeters of space doing? Well, if you think about the back of a rear wheel, and if you bump that out an extra six millimeters, that means the spokes are gonna be further out, closer to the edge of the bike. So you're gonna provide more strength to the wheel by having a wider hub. So that's the big benefit of boost hubs in the rear of your bike. And so yes, we went from all the way from 130 in the back on mountain bikes, all the way to 148 where we currently are. <laughs> Through axles are a lot more complicated. And so one, we know that the standard of the of the hub space is 100 in the front and 142 in the back, or 110 in the front, 148 in the back. But that doesn't mean that you can just go buy a standard axle because we have different lengths of the axles depending on how wide the frame or the fork are. And then we have different depths of threads on them. Okay, so uh, sometimes you might have a few millimeters and we'll take this mountain bike one as an example if you look at the lengths of threads on these two you can see this mountain bike front one has far fewer threads than this one does on the right okay so that's one difference so the nice thing is is most axles have printed on them the length of the axle um, the thread length of the axle and then the thread pitch so what is thread pitch well the thread pitch is how tightly these threads on the screw are, okay? So this is really important because if you have the wrong thread pitch uh, and you try to insert it in here, so this is the wrong size, but if you have the wrong thread pitch, they simply will not screw together and you'll end up cross-threading or stripping either the axle or the nut. Three different thread pitches that are commonly used right here. This is a Maxil made by SRAM. So this is for a uh, mountain bike front fork, a rock shock. And uh, you can see this says length 158, even though 110 is the length of the hub spacing. Um, the thread length is nine millimeters. There's nine millimeters of uh, thread space right here. And then the thread pitch is 15 times 1.5. So 1.5 thread pitch. Now there's three common thread pitches that are used, 1.0, 1.5 and 1.75 and so the finest pitch meaning the 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 threads that are closest together is 1.0 okay so this is what's kind of interesting to me is SRAM uses 1.5 for their front mountain bikes and then their UDH which is a new standard uses 1.0 so you have two different standards with one company I, I don't know why but we'll get into that all of the bikes at Diamond uh, use a standard 1.5 thread pitch. It's right in the middle, so it's not too fine, not too coarse. It's your Goldilocks of your through axles. But you still have to be careful. You need to make sure that however long your axle is, that you're buying the right size. So this axle right here, which is one from Diamond, is 12. So that's 12 millimeters by 124 length times 12 times 1.5 thread pitch and 16 millimeters of threads on the end of this one. So here we had nine and here we have 16. You can obviously see the difference between those. But here I'll pull up this 1.0 thread pitch one. Um, what will happen though, if I use this 1.5 nut and I try to thread these together, it doesn't work, right? They're, they're not compatible. So forcing this can ruin both of these components, but surely will ruin one of them. So you have to make sure your thread pitch is right. And then you also have to make sure that the length of, of threads is appropriate for your frame. So if, you, if the axle length is too long, 
what happens then is the threads pitch out the other side of the fork and you'll have this nasty looking um, thread hanging out at the end of your fork or your frame. If they're too short, they're not going to go in enough. So the idea is to be able to be just right, get that Goldilocks right in the middle. And so use the numbers printed on your through axles to help you find replacements. So I talked briefly about it before, and now I'm going to get into it. So SRAM has this really cool new standard that you'll see on this rock hard mountain bike. Uh, it's very cool. It's called UDH or universal derailleur hanger. And again, it's boost hub spacing. So it's 12 millimeters by 148 millimeters wide. And the derailleur hanger actually hangs directly on the derailleur and it goes on both sides of the frame. And it uses an axle uh, that threads straight through both sides of the derailleur. Um, I'm gonna take this one out just so we can see what it looks like. I gotta use on this one, I gotta use a wrench to pull it out. And you can see it's a lot of turns on here because it uses a 1.0 thread pitch. So I'm gonna pull this axle out and you can take a look at this. So this is a 142, 12 times 1.0 fine. And you can see this one has a ton, a ton of thread length on it right here. Uh, and that's so it threads through both sides for the UDH. Um, so this is a pretty cool uh, process that SRAM has. I'm not sure why the UDH standard, other than maybe they need the fine threads for the strength of the derailleur. They want you to turn it more and more. Um, but it is strange to me that SRAM's mountain bikes have this tiny amount of threads on them right here, 15, 1.5 thread pitch, and then they're using a 12 times 1.0 thread pitch for the rear. Um, but it is cool technology and it is what uh, we're gonna move forward to on all of our mountain bike frames um, because it's incredibly, incredibly strong to have this through axle run all the way through the frame through have the derailleur actually sandwich both sides of the rear of the frame and thread in not to a nut but to the actual derailleur itself right so there's videos of people standing on these derailleur hangers and doing all kinds of crazy things uh, so they're incredibly strong so i hope that answers some questions for you today about axles derailleur hangers axle widths um, we get a lot of questions about this, so knowledge is power. Watch this video, pass it on to your friends so you know the difference between quick release, through axles, thread pitch, and what you're looking for on your next bike or when you need a replacement part. And as always, if you're looking for a new bike, we sell the best bikes around at Diamond Bikes. We not only uh, have triathlon bikes, we also offer road, gravel, and mountain bikes. And we are a bespoke bike manufacturer, so we will help you choose all the right components for you, nothing you don't need. You can start from scratch, build your dream bike, custom painted right here in Des Moines, Iowa to your exact specifications. Thank you very much.